Now, you've probably heard of this before, but I think it becomes particularly interesting when we think about um, South Park and the episode we're going to watch, which is the, the sissy. But, I mean, you could look at the whole arc of Mr. and Mrs. Garrison, too, and really, and really explore this, is... You know that gender is a performance. This is a theory by Judith Butler. It's very old. At this point, it's 30 fucking years old. This is not new news. You've probably heard about it in a, in a bunch, bunch of other classes. But I think South Park actually shows this in some of its episodes and through some of its characters. It actually makes this obvious. It makes it so obvious like that these are learned behaviors. And... The, the, the concept is Judith Butler looked at drag, that the drag cultures, and they looked at how, you know, basically drag um, challenges this concept of gender identity, that you are this way, that you are male, that you are female. You know, drag challenges that. It, 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 it really puts to the test that, that this is actually, here's how we perform a gender. And that that performance you know, maybe is who we are. And then we can go back to, you know, the gender that is associated with our sex. That basically it shows that gender is something that can be played with. That it's not something that's fixed. That it's not a fixed category. That it's not this or that. It's this and that and that and that and that. You know, that it's fluid. That it's never a fixed category and that you know we're always acting this we're always acting this out so if you're cis you know cis male you're acting out what you've learned you know for me what I've learned to how to act based upon that what it means to be a man you know what what that entails you know and I'm performing that you know um and the important thing is she says that this act is like is a historical performance that you know again because we're taught this through history taught this through our family we're taught this through our parents you know all these things sort of teach us how to do this performance that it's been scripted for us in a very specific way and then we and then we act it out and and you know i i think the most important thing um is that she says that gender is something you do not what you are that it's that that it's something that can be played with and we see this in the sissy which we're going to watch here in a, in a in a few seconds okay but i think that garrison really shows the ultimate you know and this requires you to be somewhat familiar with you know south park in general and the overall arcs i mean you know um you know with um garrison you know um having a surgery and becoming a woman, right? And then he goes from being a gay male to being a, a lesbian. And so he's always a site of exploration of sexual orientation and um, gender identity and sexual orientation based on gender identity. He's always, you know, challenging and playing with, um, you know, the stereotypes there um, as well. And this is something that we're going to see in the episode uh, follow that follow that egg as as, as well because part of the reason why he thinks that he can be with and marry Mr. Slave is because he's now a woman and only a man and a woman can get married but um, he finds out that you know the governor is about to pass a, a same-sex marriage or marriage equality law in Colorado so I think just if we if we generally look at queer theories in general, and, and this is just a fucking like almost like a basic Wikipedia sort of description, you know, if we look at queer queer theory, it just accepts that there's multiple multiple identities at work, sexual um, and gender identities that are that are happening, and that. You know, when we think of queerness, it kind of in we it, it kind of avoids binaries. You know, gay or straight, male or female, and it supposes that those are all being played with, and that those things maybe don't matter. That they're two extreme, um, you know, sides that you can, you know, be um, be 
in between that you can be non-identifying with those with those elements okay and the important part when we think about like queerness is that these these labels only um, exist as discourse as creations as constructions as used and reused languages that 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 are uh, you know these categories are socially constructed themselves i mean just the names that we have and how we use them and ascribe meaning to them they're all social dis constructions via discourse how we talk about what it means to be this and that um, and so it's just important that it's a non-binary sort of way of thinking about sex and um, and gender.